right? We're gonna talk about the uh, Jetty server, right? We're gonna talk about what it is, you know, why we choose to use it, and how we can use it to our advantage, right? So let's start by um, talking about what is Jetty, right? So Jetty is it's basically two things, right? It is a uh, a web server and it is also a java servlet container right it's it's open source and it can be licensed under the apache or the eclipse license so that is important because that allows us to use it in a uh, commercial software right because other other um licenses such as jpl or uh, or um, or uh, or other ones are not so uh, does not allow you to use the software in a commercial product, and of course, it's also Java based, right? All right. So Jetty is also a uh, Java server servlet container, and what a Java servlet container uh, is is basically it's a piece of uh, software that um, whose main purpose is to um, do two things. Right. One is it can manage and execute uh, servlets, and it also provides a sandbox for that servlet, right? So sandbox meaning that it can it can uh, restrict access to system resources. So, for example, um, you know, if you run multiple servlets inside a, a, a web server, and let's say that you know um, for some reason the uh, the servlet calls system that exit, right? And obviously, if you if you allow that, then it basically can terminate the whole uh, application server, and that's really bad for other other uh, servlets within that uh, within that shared container, right? So, so you know, one of the things that it can potentially do is to restrict access to to what can be done with that servlet, right? So that's just one example of sandboxing. Another example would be you know to control access to uh, like the file system, right? So you don't want uh, like uh, somebody to install a uh, a uh, a uh, foreign uh, servlet that can destroy all your data in the, in the uh, file system, right? So, so then you know, um, so basically you know, um, uh, that is the responsibility of the uh, container, right? <laughs> so, um, so basically this Java servlet container, right? It it runs Java servlets. So, what are Java servlets, right? So Java servlets are um, basically, um, a um, a uh, framework, right? It's also a library, right? It's basically has an API definition that um, that you you basically follow, right? It's um, um, it's it's used to extend applications hosted by web servers. So in this case, Jetty can um, can have a collection of Java servlets, which collectively would make up the full function of that application server right and and the and normally uh, java servlets are used to to process http requests and this is really done by the web server so the web server would take the request and forward that to the java servlet container which can then map to a java servlet to be executed and uh and java serverless can be compared to uh like uh you know uh, cgi scripts or php scripts or asp.net uh scripts and so those so basically you know java serverless is basically a, a piece of code that handles a request on the server side right so now each servlet has a a life cycle right so um um, so there's actually three um, three phases to this life cycle, right? First, it gets initialized. So there's since it's API, it's you know uh, there's a there's a certain convention, right? So um, when when the when the server is created, basically the init method is called, right? And for every request that is handled by the by the, by the web server, it's it's called Basically, the web server will forward that request and call the service uh, method in that um, servlet. And then, after that, uh, once you know, once you once the servlet is done, it basically is destroyed. 
right so now this is this this is basically defined in the um the server api definition right but um but there are helper um helper implement helper implementations such as http servlet that uh that basically uh has uh has a more granular definition of uh of um methods that handle specific um operations based on uh the request so in this case uh http servlet will call um uh, predefined methods such as do get do post do put and do head and do options depending on the http request method All right so so um so the easiest way to create a servlet is basically to extend http servlet so in this in this uh presentation there's a i, I created a, a hello world servlet right so basically what it does is it only right now handles the do get um method right so this is actually um the more common um the more common um um uh, re request <coughs> request method right so we can give we can show you that example later right but here you can see that um that you know this is a uh, a very simple implementation right all it does is in 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 this case when we do when we process a do get request right we set the content type to be text html right that's the standard uh content type and then from there um we can get the uh the the writer right so the writer is basically the way that you would use to output um any data to the um, the client. So in this case, if it's the get writer would return a print writer, and that is really meant for uh, for outputting text. Now, there's alternatively you can also get a um, output stream, and that's for writing binary data. Right. So um, again, in in your when you extend the HTTP servlet, right, you notice that there's no service method as in the previous slide mentioned right because in in the in the in this in this slide the um the server the api um defines basically three uh methods right init service and destroy but in 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 if you extend the http server it um it actually has its own implementation of the service method which will call the do get do post do put right depending on again what's the request method Right, so so when you extend the HTTP servlet, all you have to do is override the do get, the do post, or the do put, depending on your needs. Right, so in this case, um, I only overrode the do get, right, because that's because this is a very simple example. Right, so um, there are there are other alternatives to Jetty. Right, so Jetty is only one of the Java server containers available, right? The other ones are, or well, the other more um, well-known ones are basically uh, Apache Tomcat. You have also have the Glassfish server, uh, Resin server, and of course, um, the uh, you have also have a more full-blown um, servers, um, such as you know those these G2E servers like Apache Geronimo, WebLogic, IBM Westphere, and JBoss, right? So, so the Java Servlet container is just one component of a J2E uh, uh, application stack, right? Because when we talk about J2E, basically you know you have a web server, but you also have messaging uh, uh, components and other um, other other um, APIs as part of the J2E stack. Right. So, so why do we use Jetty, right? Well, when when we first uh, encountered Jetty, Jetty was at um, version six. Um. So, and it was, it was created, I think, a, a few years ago when we started using it. So, so then uh, it was um, less buggy. Um. So we considered that a mature product. It's also follow standards, so it implemented certain. 
uh, serverless APIs and other other uh, APIs that were published by uh, Sun at that time, now being Oracle. Right. <clears throat> and one of the more um, benefits that I like is is basically that we can we can configure Jetty without using XML. So um, with with the other products, right? They're very configuration file centric. So um, you are not able to construct a, uh, a Jetty Jetty server instance without having a uh, config file, right? And most and most of that uh, config file is XML based, right? So so then again, with with Jetty, we we were able to actually um, configure and create an instance of Jetty without using any configuration files. Now Jetty does support configuration files if you choose to use it, right? So you know, so you can either go either go with either approach. Now the, the main thing why we use Jetty, right, is it can be embedded into your application server, right? So you can actually use Jetty as a web server within your application server or within your app, your server application, I should say, right? Um, right, so, so then to embed um, Jetty in your application, right, you, um, it's, it's very uh, simple, right? So, um, so to create a uh, embedded um, Jetty server, Right. Basically, um, you would create a, um, a server instance, and then from there you would create the connector. Now, the connector is 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 is, is responsible for handling the network connection. So you can actually um, have multiple connectors. Each one you can specify the the port and the host. So if you didn't specify the host, then you you are you you automatically binds to all host so uh, if you have multiple network interfaces then you can bind to all of them right or you can selectively bind to um, individual uh, network interfaces right so one so after you create a connector right you you create a uh, the, the thread pool right in in this example we create a hundred threads um, at, for the thread pool right and after that you would then create the uh, the log file right so in this case um, they have helper um, classes we such as this NCSA request log and that's really just a a formatting of that uh, log right um, from there um, you can see that um, then from, after we create the log we basically now start to create the, uh, the 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 servlets so you can actually create more than one servlet so in your application's uh, server, it's it's going to be composed of one or more servlets to to make it uh, useful, right? Um, and then once you create the servlet, then you can attach that to the to the uh, to the um, the logging, right? So you can actually create either one log file per servlet, or you can share the same log file for all servlets, right? In this case, um, we're sharing the same log file. For all serverless, and um, and finally, um, you can call the start method on the server to to make it um, to uh, to start up the server. Uh, 